Hello, uh, this is Rajiv Nalawadi, and uh, welcome to Life's Magical Journeys YouTube channel. Uh, today, uh, we'll be going over uh, David Baldacci. Uh, David Baldacci is an American author and a very prolific author, right? Uh, if you visit any of the libraries here in the uh, United States, uh, it's very hard to miss uh, David Baldacci. He he would have an entire shelf dedicated to him. He has written like uh, 40 plus novels, I think. So uh, David Baldacci was born uh, in Richmond, Virginia, uh, like in 1960. So Baldacci actually had a very early interest in storytelling. So he used to write a lot of uh, stories short stories as a child and uh, so it was uh, all planning up from his, uh, from his childhood years uh, so he graduated from uh, the commonwealth university with a bachelor of arts degree in political science and then this was followed by a law degree uh, from the university of virginia so Balchi practiced uh, law for about nine years in in washington dc uh, while writing the stories uh, during his his spare time so he pursued his passion of writing alongside a very successful uh, legal career and then came his novel which was an instant uh, hit uh, that was absolute power and it was adapted into a movie directed by uh, directed and uh, starring clint eastwood and that established uh, uh, David Baldacci and it kind of cemented uh, the further success who he would see with uh, all his other novels. So with, uh, uh, with the success of Absolute Power, uh, now Baldacci turned his full attention to uh, produce like a steady stream of best-selling novels. And uh, he has continued even today he, he writes uh, novels and a uh, very prolific uh, author, as I uh, mentioned. So his, his novels have got very intricate plots uh, and very compelling characters. And you get into the you know, inside uh, uh, view, you get an inside view of the political and the legal systems with the way he covers all his narratives and uh, stories within the, uh, within the novel. So he has written several popular series, the Will Robbie series, the Amos Decker series, the Hatley Pine and the Camel Club. So each of them uh, with their own series, uh, like they have multiple novels within within these series, like uh, they're all very thrilling and uh, very complex character kind of development and presentation uh, when he brings them uh, into the novel and I have the progress, you get to uncover a lot of deep insights about the characters themselves. And he also uh, like kind of touches a lot upon all the contemporary issues of our time today, or even over the past few decades, uh, he has covered a lot of the, a lot of the contemporary uh, issues. So he has also authored uh, children books uh, like literature for children and then young adult fiction. So a very versatile author. So he is uh, he's also committed to philanthropy uh, along with literacy. So he has a Wish You Well Foundation, which he runs with his wife and he established along with his wife. Uh, so that uh, shows that his whole foundation uh, is very supportive of the family and adult literacy in the United States. Uh, and that's like uh, promoting uh, the development and expansion of new and existing uh, uh, literacy and educational programs. So he's very helpful uh, for the society as well by uh, establishing this foundation. And Baldacci has uh, like uh, all his novels been converted into uh, more than 45 languages and they are sold across 80 countries or so. Uh, so clearly like about 100 million plus copies of his novels sold uh, worldwide. Uh, and uh, not just probably in the libraries of the United States, you may find them in the libraries of other countries as well. And also probably for sure in the bookstores. <laughs> uh, my favorite spot is go and sit at the library. And I also go and sit at the 
store Barnes and Nobles, uh, which uh, which is in my uh, which is uh, which is very near uh, in my town here. So he has a very strong following, and uh, that's uh, very understandable. He captivates his uh, readers with the narrative in his novels. So the first one uh, we'll be going over is Absolute Power. And uh, as I mentioned, this brought Baldacci to the success. Uh, and then he turned uh, turned to a, being a full-time writer after uh, seeing the success of Absolute Power, his novel, as well as the movie, uh, which had Clint Eastwood. And Absolute Power actually opens with uh, Luther Whitney, uh, he's he's a very skilled burglar, burglar, and uh, breaks into this uh, very luxurious mansion, uh, and the mansion belongs to uh, Walter Sullivan, and he's one of the Washington D.C.'s most influential billionaires with connections all the way to the top, like politically, and uh, that's where Luther unexpectedly witnesses a violent encounter while he is in this home um, trying to steal. He experiences and witnesses a violent encounter uh, through a one-way mirror. So the other side cannot see him. <laughs> and he sees President Alan Richmond in a struggle with Sullivan's young wife, young and beautiful wife, Christine, and uh, which ends up in, in her murder. And Christine is murdered at the hands of the Secret Service agents that are assigned to protect Richmond. And then um, Luther manages to escape from the home, uh, and but he carries a crucial piece of evidence uh, that uh, that can bring out uh, what happened, really happened at uh, Walter Sullivan's home, and uh, what. Uh, what the secret service agents did, what the president did, and how Christine died. So he carries a crucial piece of evidence. So the murder is quickly covered up right, by the president's men framing Sullivan's wife, and they are blaming Sullivan's wife for a burglary gone wrong. And Luther actually possesses this knowledge, real knowledge and evidence that could bring down the presidency and his corrupt circle of uh, friends. And uh, also remember, this involves Walter Sullivan as well, into whose home he had broken into. <laughs> and the story escalates as Luther becomes a target. So he's sought by the president's uh, uh, man, secret service, the ruthless chief of staff, and uh, they will they will do anything to silence any kind of threats because it's all about power, right? Gaining that uh, power. So all the authorities are uh, behind Luther. So now uh, the heart of the novel itself comes down to Seth Frank. He's a seasoned homicide detective and uh, he is determined to unravel the truth, what, whatever exists behind that model. And uh, as Frank digs deeper, he becomes entangled in this web of deceit uh, that that is being spun around in the president's, uh, among the president's men or by the president's men. And then the narrative actually uh, goes through the perspectives of uh, Luther, Frank, and other key characters, including the morally uh, conflicting Syrian, uh, secret service agents and Sullivan himself. So Sullivan himself is torn between the loyalty to, to the president and the shocking truth about his wife's uh, death. So very masterful exploration of uh, various things, I would say, corrupting influence uh, of absolute power and then uh, what are kind of the themes of justice and morality that we have to deal with. So Baldacci creates this suspenseful plot and a thriller which is very fast paced and, uh, uh, and it also at the same time critiques the political power's potential to corrupt uh, and kind of uh, spin a narrative that is totally convenient uh, and suits the powerful uh, that are in the game, uh, game of uh, game of anything. Literally. <laughs> so it's a, it's sort of a uh, commentary or a critique that Baldacci offers in the novel as well. 
The next one is uh, Memory Man. And uh, Memory Man actually is uh, another one of the series. And uh, that features uh, Amos Decker. So Decker is a professional football player turned detective. So uh, Amos Decker's career ended uh, abruptly due to a violent helmet-to-helmet uh, -helmet collision on his first play. And uh, this incident has left him with a rare condition that is called as hyperthymesia, uh, which causes him to remember every detail of every day of his life. And uh, there is also a condition called as synesthesia, and that crosswires his uh, senses. So two conditions, hyperthymesia and synesthesia. So the story begins with the uh, tragedy that uh, shatters Decker's world, right? His wife uh, and the young daughter and brother-in-law are brutally murdered in their home. So now um, Decker is uh, is like experiencing a lot of grief and he's haunted by the memory of discovering their bodies. So now his life spirals out of control, kind of leading him to lose his job and almost his will to live as well uh, because he lost his loved ones. And there is a murder investigation that gets stalled. So there is no progress, and then um, the case goes into the cold. So that leaves Decker with no closure, essentially. Uh, but then the narrative shifts. <laughs> and years later, a man walks into the local police station and confesses to the murders of uh, Decker's family. And uh, around the same time, coincidentally, there is a horrific school shooting that occurs in Decker's hometown. And uh, somehow, Decker, uh, because of those two conditions, hyperthymesia and synesthesia, right? Decker notices a connection uh, between the shooting and his family's killer. And that's what he can only experience. But now he has to bring it out to the world, right? And that's the revelation that uh, pulls him back into the world of police work. And uh, he becomes uh, determined to use his remarkable memory and his capability that he has gained uh, with uh, deductive skills. Uh, now he has to apply all of that. But uh, now the mystery of his family's death uh, and the school shooting are somehow tied. Right? And as Decker works with the local police, they uncover a complex web of conspiracy and deceit that challenges uh, Decker's capabilities and his abilities as well. And that's a condition uh, that allows him to spot the clues and connections for others may miss easily, right? But it, uh, Decker can really uh, go through kind of uh, uh, these capabilities or abilities that he has gained to relive some of the painful memories uh, uh, constantly. And uh, that makes it a very wonderful, wonderful read. And uh, also Baldacci is exploring the various themes here, uh, sort of it's tied to redemption and there is uh, loss of memory and overall loss itself in a personal life. And uh, Decker struggles to find justice for family and then he himself has to uh, like uh, kind of tackle and confront the dark corners of his uh, of his mind as well. So that makes it a very interesting read. Multiple themes at school theory. The 620 Man is another wonderful, wonderful uh, novel by Baldacci. The novel itself opens with uh, Travis Devine, uh, and his life is in complete uh, disarray after he has been uh, he, he, he has been sort of uh, honorably discharged from the army under mysterious circumstances. And uh, Travis uh, now has taken a job at this prestigious financial firm in New York City. And uh, it's a position because uh, he secured uh, in this financial firm due to his military service and the influence of some powerful uh, family friend. So, his uh, routine existence is sort of shattered when he cover, uh, discovers the body of his roommate, a fellow veteran, and uh, he appears to have committed suicide. 
but uh, Travis is really, really skeptical of the suicide ruling uh, by the uh, by the police authorities and homicide authorities. And his doubts are further complicated when he receives like uh, a pre-recorded message uh, from his deceased friend, uh, and he's imploring him to investigate his death. And this is a pre-recorded message. And uh, Travis now has to dive deeper into the mystery and uh, himself will be caught into uh, a dangerous game now involving the firm's top executives, shadowy figures, very powerful authorities, and uh, he has to deal with his military past and uh, all the federal agents uh, who have their own agendas, essentially. And uh, the 620 title itself is uh, sort of a reference to Amos Decker, uh, or I'm sorry, Travis Devine. Uh, I got confused with uh, uh, Travis Devine taking this uh, early morning rain, uh, and Travis, uh, 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 like always, punctually takes the 620 train, and it's also symbolic of his entry into a world of deceit and danger when he takes this train to go out uh, to his uh, to his workplace. And uh, the 620 uh, man also sort of uh, uh, in this investigation uh, leads through the dark underbelly of Wall Street and uh, the corruption and corruptive powers in Washington, D.C. So there is there is a huge conspiracy that is threatening not only like Travis's life, but the very fabric of American society. So that's what uh, you know, that's what it kind of uh, goes through. Uh, as the novel progresses. So there is a very tense narrative and it is combined uh, with uh, elements of financial thriller and the corporate espionage and personal redemption that Travis has to deal with. The novel uh, is a very big plot uh, with well-drawn character and then uh, uh, also about uh, how all these events Travis has to kind of weave them together of uh, the death of his friend and uh, also the young secretary uh, that he has in the financial firm and the overall financial firm, which is his workplace. And people want him to do different things. Uh, every every agency, the financial executives, all of them have their own agenda. And now Baldacci, through this, is exploring the themes of uh, loyalty, and uh, justice and the search for truth in a world that is uh, uh, that is sort of doesn't seem like uh, is so tied to understanding uh, the cost of integrity and uh, the cost of integrity is really really very high and uh, the novel keeps the readers guessing there is many twists and turns, and it's also offering a thought-provoking commentary, uh, such as uh, veteran affairs, uh, and then the corporate corruption, and the moral complexities of uh, of the sort of uh, modern warfare that that exists in the society. So the uh, next one is long road to mercy. Long road to mercy is uh, introducing. Uh, FBI agent Atlee Pine, and this is part of an Atlee Pine series. So Atlee Pine's uh, life was forever changed when, uh, at the age of six, her twin sister, Mercy, she was kidnapped by a notorious serial killer. And uh, for many, many decades, uh, like this has haunted Atlee. And uh, the path of uh, Long Road to Mercy, it kicks off though on a different uh, trajectory uh, or a different uh, kind of uh, you know, plot where uh, a, there is a mule that is found dead in the Grand Canyon and its rider is missing. The mule has been killed. And initially it seems like a simple case of animal cruelty and a missing person. But uh, Pine, as she, uh, as she dives deeper into this investigation, she uncovers a very sinister plot and uh, also has got a lot of national security implications. The missing person who happens to be a very prominent figure uh, with deep connections, and uh, somehow his disappearance is linked to an international 
conspiracy that involves nuclear weaponry. And uh, ultimately, when it is nuclear weaponry, there is national security that is involved. And hence, uh, hence FBI agent Atli Pine is involved. So Pine actually finds uh, uh, herself against very powerful enemies that will stop at nothing right, to protect their secrets. And there is uh, a very small team she has to rely upon. And uh, that includes the administrative assistant, Carol Bloom. Uh, both of them, they seem to raise against time to unravel what is this conspiracy uh, that is sort of leading towards national catastrophic, having to do with nuclear uh, weaponry. Uh, the second novel, which is the Atlee Pine series, is A Minute to Midnight. Um, and in A Minute to Midnight, uh, at the heart of this novel uh, lies again Atlee Pine. She has to be uh, dealing with the past, and this has this has kind of progressed and stuck with her over the course of multiple decades. And uh, it's still about unraveling the mystery of her twin sisters and abduction. And it is a traumatic event, of course. And uh, uh, and even though three decades have gone by, uh, Atlee Pine cannot shake it off uh, her memory. So now, unlike her other cases, where this one uh, or this novel explores a deeply personal connection and uh, Pine takes a leave of absence from the FBI. And finally, she is well went upon trying to get to the bottom of what happened to her sister, Mercy. And she's accompanied again by her loyal assistant, Carol Bloom. And Pine returns to her hometown in Georgia. Uh, and she has to confront with her past. So now Pine's investigation into her sister's disappearance quickly becomes sort of entangled uh, with the series of new crimes that have been taking place in her small Georgia hometown. And then a woman is found murdered and uh, in, in a manner that only uh, kind of uh, mirrors uh, several other victims. So there is multiple uh, multiple victims here. And this has to do with the serial killer. So the town is thrown in a state of uh, fear and confusion uh, with, with all these murders. And there is sort of a, a signature uh, with uh, with these uh, crimes that are being committed. And it, the ritualistic victim's uh, presentation, the way the serial killer is, uh, is projecting uh, or kind of presenting in a ritualistic fashion uh, for all the murders that uh, are being committed. So the novel uh, kind of goes through Pine's personal uh, quest with uh, mixed with professional attitude that she has to keep up um, having between pro personal and professional because this is a novel that is exploring the depth of a personal story as well as far as uh, Atlee Pine is concerned. And she has to navigate the complexities of both uh, her sister's court case and also the new fresh uh, suspicious models that are uh, taking place in her, uh, in her hometown. Uh, very good uh, read in this Atlee Pine series. I think both of them um, deals with the loss and redemption of how you need to deal with that. How do you, uh, how, uh, what, what people go through when they can't shake out uh, some of the uh, experiences that uh, that they have gone through in the past. Something like an abduction and you know, the missing uh, twin sister. There are other David Baldacci novels. Uh, because of time, I couldn't cover them today. I will be covering them in a uh, very immediate uh, video, like uh, coming soon. Uh, the Innocent uh, and then The Camel Club, that's another series, and uh, Zero Day. So these are other novels and many others, and as Baldacci has written short plus novels. I will cover them as I get to read them, but these I have read and I can cover them. Uh, in a future video. So uh, do subscribe to Life's Magical Journeys if you're interested in hearing uh, such uh, authors and uh, uh, their novels. So also subscribe to the socials, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Uh, that's it for today. And uh, hope to see you soon with another author and their novels. Bye.